We're going to take our country back. We're going to take our country back. So sad to see what's happening. Hello, Iowa, and a very, very happy new year. We're going to have a great year. Hopefully, it's going to be one of the greatest years ever. You know why? Because in November, it's going to be big. It's going to be bigger than anything's ever happened to this country, I think. It really is of that magnitude, and I appreciate such a big turnout. We come to every little part of this place, and the people are greater and greater every stop. And we want to hit every corner, and we're really honored to see the crowd that we had, the turnout that we have. You're incredible people. You built this country. You built this country. <laughs> Ten days from now, the people of this state are going to cast the most important vote of your entire lives. I believe that, too, very much. I used to say that 2016, and I believed it then, and now I believe this is even much more important. Our country's going to, our country's going to hell. You don't mind me using that horrible word, don't you? I use that word because our country's really in trouble. It's in trouble like it's never been before, in my opinion. We have a man who's grossly incompetent dealing, about, de dealing with nuclear war. He's dealing against Russia. He's dealing against President Xi of China. If you would deal with these people, you'd say it's not a fair fight. By delivering the massive victory, it's going to be, I think it's going to be really a tremendous victory in Iowa because I'm seeing polls that are phenomenal, but the the main thing I got to ask you, look, we got to get out and vote because, you know, bad things happen when you sit back. And they said, we love him. We love the job. We love the job he did for the farmers, for the whole state. But uh, let's sit home and watch it. Maybe it'll be a little bit cold that night or a little bit rainy. So important that we get out and vote and really show it, show the strength, because the only way we can get hurt is if you sit home and want to watch the great results on television. Then you say, is it too late? We got to get out there fast. But uh, that's not going to happen. But if you would get out and vote, even though, you know, the polls have us way, way up, uh, strange things happen. So uh, if you don't mind, look, she's shaking her head. You're right. You're right. Oh, we've seen some very strange things happen. But I'm not worried about that. I, you know, the one thing I'm worried here, I'm worried about it a lot of other places. I'm not worried about it here. What I'm worried about here is we have to just get out and uh, show the support because it's going to make a big difference in November. We're voting now, but it's going to make a big difference in November. By delivering a massive victory in Iowa, you'll send a thundering message to crooked Joe Biden. He's a crooked man, He's an incompetent crooked man. You're going to send it to the fake news media right back there. Well, that's a lot of press for this corner, this beautiful, this beautiful location. You know, they said, you didn't really have to come here. I said, like hell, I don't have to come here. I have to come here. If I didn't come here, I'd be in big trouble. I'd be in big trouble. Brad, my first supporter, you know, he's right here. I think I call him the Marlboro man, right? Brad, he's right here. He said, you better get there, sir. You better get there. I said, I'll get there. But all the evil and all the sinister people trying to destroy our nation, and that's what happens. They are destroying our nation. Uh, I don't know how much more our nation can take. When you look at the border, when you look at Afghanistan, the way we got out, we were going to get out. We were going to get out with strength and dignity. And the way we got out was something, I think, the most horrible day, the most embarrassing day or moment in the history of our country. And that led to a lot of other bad things, including Russia going into Ukraine, a lot of other bad things it led to. With your vote for our campaign on Monday, January 15th, you'll declare that we are going to take back our country, we're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden, and we're going to make America great again. Right? And it all starts right here, you know, because of me. I will tell you, I'll take full credit. I'll take 100% of the credit, if you don't mind, Governor. Uh, go first in the nation. And you are first in the nation. And uh, that's something that was very important to me. You know, you have a great tradition in Iowa, a great tradition for farming and plenty of other things. But you have a great political tradition. And they wanted to move you to the back of the pack. I said, we're not doing that to Iowa. We're not doing it. Maybe somebody else someday, hopefully long down, because I'll have signed, I'll have signed those rights into your corner for a long period of time. You'll be here. I said, the, I said from day one, right? I said, we're never moving you. You know, and you have forces that want to move. You notice the Democrats moved. You did notice that? A couple of people maybe noticed that. But they moved. But you didn't move because of what I did. It all starts here in Iowa at 7 p.m. on Martin Luther King Day, 7 p.m., 
So don't stay home. If you want to save America, each and every one of you, get out and vote and really bring your friends. We talk about 10. Bring 10 people, but bring whatever it is. You could also bring more than 10 people, I guess. But bring whatever you have to bring. Before going further, I want to send our support and our deepest sympathies to the victims and families touched by the terrible school shooting yesterday in Perry, Iowa. To the entire community, we love you, we pray for you, and we ask God to heal and comfort Really, the whole the whole state and the pain, the pain that you have, this is something that's very unique to your state. Uh, we're really with you uh, as much as anybody can be. It's a very terrible thing that happened, and uh, it's just horrible to see that happening. That's just horrible. So surprising to see it here. But uh, we have to get over it. We have to move forward. We have to move forward, but to the relatives and to all of the people that are so devastated right now to a point they can't breathe, they can't live. Uh, we are with you all the way. We're with you and we love you and cherish you. We're, uh, we're also really delighted today to have some of the great endorsers and my great friends, State Senators Lynn Evans, Kevin Alance, Jeff Taylor, and Brad Zahn. I told you Brad was the first one in the nation. He endorsed me three months before I ran. Where's Brad? The Marlboro man. Where is he? Where is he? Come here, Brad. Get up here, Brad. Come here. Want to say something? Come on. That was easy to endorse you. And he is the best president of my lifetime. The 47th President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. I said, who's that guy named Brad in Iowa? Because this was three months before I even knew I was running. Hey, Brad, I tell you, I never wanted to say it. I had no idea I was running, Brad. But he said, if that guy in New York wants to run, he's got my endorsement. He's going to do it. He can turn it around. He's the only one I know that can turn it around. And... Uh, he was actually the and I, I endorse him, he said. I said, that's my first endorsement. So when I finally got to meet him, which was around 2015, in 2015, so it's a long time already, but uh, a lot of great things have happened, and then we had a lot of bad things happen the last three years. A lot of bad, bad things happened. But I was very honored by Brad, and uh, there's a special feeling you have for some people, you know, when that happens. And I have that special feeling from him. He's a great person, and he uh, loves this state very much, does a great job. Today, I'm also proud to announce that our campaign has been endorsed by pastors and faith leaders in every single one of the 99 counties. That's almost, I think, a first. Thank you very much. God is with us. I think so, right? Thank you very much. These are great people. That's a great honor. I think that's the first to all 99 counties. The stakes for this election could not be higher under crooked Joe Biden. Our borders, if you noticed, and I'm sure nobody's noticed, our borders have been erased. They've been obliterated. We have people coming in, millions and millions of people coming in. They're coming in from prisons. They're coming in from mental institutions. They're terrorists. Millions of people are coming in that shouldn't be here. Uh, if you look at the world's, not just the three or four nations that we think about you know, whether it's Mexico or uh, if you, anyone, any one of the nations. You could also, by the way, you know, we also have a northern border that's not exactly doing too well. But if you look Honduras, El Salvador, any one of these nations, it's not them. It's everybody all over the world. They caught uh, prisoners the other day from the Congo. When I say caught, they catch them and they release them. We used to catch them and release them into Mexico. Do you remember? We released them into May. It was called Catch and Release into Mexico. And they gave that up. You think that was easy to get from Mexico? No, but they did it. They did it. They did it very gladly. We didn't have to pay. Now they want billions of dollars to help us with this problem. And with me, they never even asked for billions of dollars. I said, you're going to pay billions of dollars if you don't help us with this problem. But all over the world, we're talking about not just the countries near us or the countries only in South America. They, they do. They come from the Congo. They come from Africa. They come from Asia. They, many people from China. Uh, they happen to be about the age of this gentleman right here, you know, around 20 for perfect, perfect age in his 
early 20s. Just perfect for the military, isn't it, huh? 27,000 people from China, all males, all between 20 and 25. Perfect for the military. I wonder what that's all about. So it's a pretty scary thing. We have them coming in from Russia, the same thing. They all seem to be between 19 and 24 or 25. I wonder, I wonder why that, that is. We're going we're gonna to be paying a price, but we'll take care of it. If we get in, we're going to be taking care of it. We're going to have no choice but to take care of it. We're not going to have a country. But our middle class is being crushed by Biden's crippling inflation. The inflation has been uh, the worst that we've ever had. They say 72 years, sir. Be accurate. I say, I think it's the worst we've ever had. There's never been anything like this where your food prices have tripled. And uh, every single thing you do, the energy prices, look at what's happened to energy. Violent criminals are running wild in Democrat-run cities, while law enforcement has been weaponized against Christians and conservatives and people of faith. It's weaponized against Christians. It's really weaponized. I don't know how many Catholics are in the room. Maybe not that many here. Are they? Well, what are we doing with the Catholics? I mean, they are going, they're persecuting Catholics. And then the Catholics, it's 50-50 between Catholics and us. Trump. 50-50. And I say, you know, it's amazing. I got a call from uh, the Cardinal, New York. A very good man. And he, he said, uh, sir, this was during the pandemic. He said, sir, we need billions of dollars to help us with our education. Our schools, we're losing a fortune. And I got him the money. It was very important to get it because they do a tremendous service and they have great schools, but they were hurting badly during that. And I was able to get him the money. And uh, then I look at the vote. It's like 50-50. And I say, why? But now uh, they are persecuting Catholics in particular. I don't know what's going on with the Catholics. You guys are Catholic. What's going on with Catholics? Why are they doing this with Catholics? Something's happening. But they're doing it with Christians and they're doing it with parents and they're doing it with a lot of people. And uh, you explain you explain that one. Let's go and get the parents at the school board meetings, right? It's ridiculous. But we have wars in Europe. We have war in the Middle East. And China is threatening Taiwan. Iran is inches away from a nuclear bomb. They're going to have a nuclear bomb, they say, in 34 days. And we, when we were in charge, Iran was broke. Iran had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah. Uh, they were broke. Now they're very rich. They have $250 billion, they say, not including the $6 billion they got for a hostage trade. We got five, and they got five. I said, all right, that's good. That's better than they usually do. Usually, you know, we give up. Well, we gave up the king of terror. You know, we the last, with the basketball player, Brittany Griner, uh, we, we gave up, we gave up the greatest uh, purchaser of military arms and equipment and very deadly equipment in the history of the world, they say. Uh, he was called the Phantom of Death. So they got him, and we got Brittany. And, and that was a tough trade. That was a tough trade. But, you know, at least she's standing now for the national anthem, I think. But she didn't stand too much. She was... She always wanted to tie her sneakers during the national anthem. I didn't like that. I didn't like it. That was the time when she heard the national anthem, that meant it was time for her to tie up her sneakers. I don't like that. But our military has gone woke, and we're teetering on the edge of World War III. We've never been closer than we are right now to World War III. There's only one candidate in this race who is going to be up to the task of saving America from every single Biden disaster starting on day one. Number one, I know the uh, the players on the other side, and they always respected your country. I don't want to say they respected me, but boy, did they respect this country when I was in charge. They respected us like they've never, like they've never respected us, right? You wouldn't have had Ukraine. You wouldn't have had Israel being attacked. Russia wouldn't be attacking Ukraine, but you wouldn't have had the attack on Israel. You wouldn't have had inflation. You wouldn't have had any of this stuff. You wouldn't have... China longing to go into Taiwan. You know, they're just waiting for the right moment. They wouldn't even talk about it. They weren't even talking about it, though. They, and they won't be, I promise you that. But with your vote in these caucuses, we're going to finish the job, and we're going to get it done, and we're going to actually be stronger than ever before. It's hard to believe, because you see the damage. 
that's been done. No president has ever, ever. You, and, I, you know, I often say you can take the 10 worst presidents in the history of our country, you can add them up, put them together, and they haven't done the damage that Joe Biden's done to this country. What he's done to this country is unthinkable. Biden's record is an unbroken streak of weakness, incompetence, corruption, and failure. Other than that, he's doing quite well, isn't he, don't you? That's a hell of a list. That's a hell of a list, right? That's why Crooked Joe is staging his pathetic, fear-mongering campaign event in Pennsylvania today. Did you see him? He was stuttering through the whole thing. He's going, I'm, uh, I'm going to, he's a threat to democracy. I'm a threat. They've weaponized government. He's saying, I'm a threat to democracy. He's a threat to da, da, democracy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't read the word. He's a threat to democracy. You know how bad the press is? You know what they do? They take me saying that like that, and they say, Trump couldn't say the word democracy. <laughs> Look. No, that's what they do. They're so bad. You know, I don't know if you saw it. I was on Sean Hannity, a good guy, really good guy, right? And we did a town hall, and he says, tell us, you're not going to be a dictator, right? I said, Sean, I'm going to be a dictator for one day for drilling and for closing the border, and after that, I'm not going to be a dictator. So, so remember the way I said, I'm going to be a dictator for one day for those two things. And then after that, I'm not going to be. So I said, I'm going to be a dictator for one day for drilling, right? For drilling. And then, so what do they do? What do they do? We say drilling and the border. Then I go, and then after that, I'm not going to be a dictator. So one day. So they have me on the news all over the place. I'm going to be a dictator. Cut. <laughs> they, did you see that? Yeah. This is the fake news media. They have the first part. I'm going to be a dictator. Cut. And they had to cut it fast because I kept it going fast because I know exactly what they do. <laughs> they had me the other day. I was imitating uh, Biden because he can't walk off the stage, right? You know, I could, <laughs> no, he can never find the exit. So they have me turning around and looking for him. I mean, these stages have a lot of stairs on them. Some of them are four or five stairs, and he did. He had, like, so many stairs, he couldn't find it. And they showed me that I couldn't find the way off the stage. In other words, they said he couldn't find the way off the stage. And it's just terrible. They're so bad. They, you guys are so dishonest. You're so pathetic. That's why they're all going out of business, I'll tell you. They are just so pathetic. And, you know, it's so important. Having a, an honest media is so important. But they just aren't. And it's a lot of times what they don't say. It's not only what they say, it's what they don't say. But so I, I have to be very careful with sarcasm because I'm a little sarcastic sometimes. And you say something <laughs> and everybody there is laughing, having a good time. But they put it on as though you mean it, you know. It's, uh, so you can't have any fun during these rather terrible times, if you think about it. Because Bur Biden, I mean, if you, if you take a look at what he's doing on the border uh, or fl inflation or our military, that horrible day in Afghanistan. Uh, you look at what he's done with energy all throughout the world. We're an embarrassment as a country. We become an embarrassment as a country. The only reason Biden is at Valley Forge abusing George Washington's legacy. I mean, he's abusing Washington's legacy, and he never sticks up for Washington. You know, they've taken the name George Washington off many schools and many different. Can you believe it? The name George Washington is coming down from Many schools, many in California, and uh, he ought to stop that. But it's a legacy to, it's really a slander and a horrible statement he's making to 75 million Americans. That's what they say. It's much more than that. You saw the numbers that came out yesterday on the election. Everybody saw those numbers. They were released. The fake news doesn't want to talk about them. But it's a disgrace what happened in 2020. It's a disgrace, and everybody knows it. I think they have 81 percent of the people understand that. But he knows he can't show his face at the southwest border or in East Palestine, Ohio, where I love those people. They were great people. I went there early when they had that really bad situation. And he, uh, 
went to the auto workers' factories. He's given away our auto business to China, mostly to China. You could sit down if you want. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, I'm, I'm not kidding with those people that sit and you can't stand up in the front, right? But thank you very much. But, you know, people are waiting for three, four days in these things. That's cold out there. That's a long wait, right? It's pretty cold out there. I said, uh, where's my coat? I had to walk 15 feet from the car to the... I said, do you have a coat? And these people are waiting for three days. So that's good. That means you're hearty. You're hearty people. You're strong people. Thank you. Thank you very much. But you, if, you, if you take a look, Crooked Joe cannot talk about a single issue that matters to hardworking Americans because he's failed you and he's betrayed us on every single issue. And on policy, he's the worst ever. And people have known that for a long time. Secretary of States have said he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, Obama said it. A lot of people said it. But he doesn't know what he's doing. You look at what's happening in the Middle East. You look at what's going on with Ukraine. Uh, he, he doesn't know what he's doing. Biden and the radical left Democrats lie to us because they know that Americans can't stand the truth about them because they know how badly they're doing. They are doing so badly. You know, they start off with a base. Because people said, a friend of mine called up, we're leading by 11 in a number of places. Now, 11's a lot, but a friend of mine called up, how come you're only leading by 11? This guy can't put two sentences together. I said, well, they start off with a base like about 39. He's at 38, so that's... He said, that's interesting. It's hard to be a 38 as a Democrat. But Republicans have to do it the old-fashioned way. We have to earn every one of them. But they have a base. I won't exactly tell you what that base is, but we all know what that base is. They have certain people that are going to vote Democrat almost no matter what. But I'll tell you, the union part of that base is coming to us. The union part. can also tell you another. The Hispanic part is coming to us at levels that nobody's ever seen before. We're leading with Hispanics. That's never happened before. And African-American is coming to us at a level that I don't think any Republican has seen. Because they understand that uh, this man is not capable. He's not a capable person. I mean, if you had a store and you wanted to take a week off, you wouldn't put him in charge of the store. No, you wouldn't. You, would you trust him to run your store? I don't think anybody would. That's a little question. It's a little, you know, thing. If you have a store, would you trust the President of the United States to run your store? He couldn't do it. This election is our last chance to save America. Very important. The battle begins in Iowa on January 15th, and Joe Biden's Banana Republic ends on November 5th, 2024. <laughs> And I believe, because the stock market's doing okay for the last six months, but I believe the reason is because we're leading in all the polls. I think if we weren't, the stock market would be going down at a level that you haven't seen. And I think if we don't win, I think you're going to end up in a stock market like you had in 1929, not a recession, a depression. I believe that. I have to say it. I really believe you're going to end up in a depression. You take a look at what these people are doing, how they're wasting all this money on green, or the Green New Scam. It's called the Green New Scam. It's horrible. Horrible, horrible. With your help, we're going to bring our country back from disaster. Our country's a disaster. Laughed at all over the world. Since 2016, you and I have been in this battle side by side. I mean, we won, we won twice, and we're going to win a third time. We're going to win by more now, they say. We're going to win by more in terms of November. We're going to win by more than... We did even the first two times, and we won nicely. We won very nice. Look, I did get you $28 billion, in all fairness, right? Who the hell else would get you $28 billion from China? The farmers of America. I say the farmers of America are not voting against Trump. They're all smiling. <laughs> they opened those big. Remember, I said, here's what you do. We're going to take a little while with China, but we're going to end up winning the negotiation, and we're going to make a great trade deal. You know, I don't even talk about that trade deal. I talk about... USMCA, I talk about all the many trade deals I made and, re and redid because you had such crazy deals. I used to say, who makes these deals? They're so bad. But I don't talk about China, but China was probably the biggest of them all. $50 billion they have to buy. They used to buy 10, 12, 50 billion they had to buy. Now, I don't know if they're watching it because I don't think Biden's going to enforce anything because China pays them a lot of money, you know? It gives them a lot of money. So he's a Manchurian candidate. And the two, you know what a Manchurian candidate is? 
this young gentleman, he doesn't know. Don't, you don't want to find out. He's a Manchurian candidate. We took on the entire corrupt system in Washington like no one has ever done before. And together, we stood up to the failed establishment, the corrupt media, the deep state, the globalists, the warmongers, the Wall Street special interests, and open border fanatics. I mean, a lot of these Wall Street guys, they know me, they like me, and I see that they're endorsing, like, Nikki Haley, bird brain. They're, in, they're endorsing Nikki Haley, who does not have what it takes, by the way. I'm just telling you, I've spent a lot of time with her. She does not have, I hope you enjoy her, you know, with her little quips, like, uh, how did the Civil War start? What was the, well, it had to do with government. It had, no, it was slavery, you know. I never questioned her on that. I never wanted to pile on. But uh, you'll find out about Nikki, and you're going to find out that Ron, you got to have a little personality, you know? We took him, <laughs> we took him from practically zero. He begged me for the endorsement. I gave him the endorsement. He was like a rocket ship. One day he was leading, and he won, and then I helped him win the general. And then four years later, they said, will you run against the president? And he says, I have no comment. I said, that means he's running. <laughs> oh, man, this guy's running. I got him elected. He's going to run against me. So I started hitting him very hard, and a lot of my geniuses backstage get paid a lot of money. Sir, don't go after him. He's a Republican. I said, I don't care if he's a Republican or not. I said, he said he has no comment. I got him elected. Uh, but you need a personality still, and there's not a lot of personality there. So, you know, you need a personality to charm foreign leaders. You think President Xi's easy to deal with, and Putin? And you think uh, Kim Jong-un? North Korea, you're going to get into a nuclear war. If Hillary won that election, you would be in a nuclear war. Who knows where you'd be right now? Because nuclear is a level that nobody wants to even think about. And, uh, you know, again, now we have the problem with Iran, and they're going to have it. You know, when I busted up that whole Iran situation, they were supposed to make a deal. But they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. And now they're going to have a nuclear weapon, and they allowed them to sell. I told China, if you buy oil from Iran, you can't do business in the United States. They said, well, uh, we're not going to buy any more oil. Thank you very much. And I said that to many countries, and they were doing literally no business. They were broke. And then uh, Biden came along, took off all those sanctions in one day, and all of a sudden you have, uh, you know, the greatest sponsor of terror anywhere in the world, probably in history, and they're giving money to everybody that wants to blow people up. But we didn't like that. But it is what it is. But they didn't do anything. I took away the, uh, I took away all of their economic power. And by the way, I wanted to make a good deal for them too. I think everybody would have been happy. But they cannot have a nuclear weapon. That was the only thing. The one thing I said, you cannot have. We would have had a deal with Iran in the first week, in the first week after the election, not even in January, after the election, we would have had a deal with Iran. But they didn't do anything. I terminated the deal, which was not easy to do. And then you were supposed to make a deal. They didn't do that. These people are incompetent, and they're very dangerous for our country. We achieved more than any administration in the history of our country. We fought long and hard to rescue the Republican Party from the likes of Mitt Romney, Karl Rove, this Paul Ryan guy who is the worst. And there's no chance. Remember Paul Ryan, wheelchair off the cliff. Remember this guy? He is bad news, and he works at Fox now. He's on the board of Fox. You think that's good? No wonder, no wonder Fox has changed. And there's no chance we're going to let them claw their way back into power and establishment like Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. You know, the other day they had him on a program, Ron DeSantis. His name is DeSantis. But they had him on a program. Ladies and gentlemen, we're proud to have the governor of Florida, Mr. Ron DeSantis. <laughs> they said, no, 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 it's DeSantis. That's good branding, right? When they can't even say his name. <laughs> Governor, yeah, Ron De Sanctimonious, actually. It's, the abbreviated version is Ron De Sanctus, right? But he's uh, got a bad seed there because any, any guy that would do that, when you get somebody elected, you say, let the president have this time. He'll do a great job. And everybody said we did a great job. Let the president do a great job. And he's young and he'll take over, but he's a bad seed. He won't, he won't be getting my endorsement. I can tell you that. Our country, thank you very much, darling. I like you, too. <laughs> Who said that? Who was in the thing? Thank you. Bro. Look at that. You look. Uh, thank you, darling. That had a nice voice, right? I heard that voice. I said, just stand up, please, if you want.
Thank you very much. Very beautiful. Our country's dying, and there's no time to waste for your vote or an, another establishment career politician. We have to straighten out our country. We have to straighten. We got, we got badly hurt when the, uh, the gift from China poured onto our shores, COVID. Uh, you know, the uh, day before that happened, I had John McLaughlin, the great pollster. He was in my office with some other pollsters, and they said, sir, uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, you can't lose. This is the greatest poll numbers I've ever seen. You know, we were a couple of years, two and a half years in. And uh, they said, you can't lose. If George Washington came back from the dead and Lincoln came back and they teamed up as president and vice president, sir, you'd beat him by a lot. I said, that sounds good. The next day I go into the Oval Office, they say, sir, there's a problem in China. There are a lot of people dying in Wuhan. Remember I said it was the Wuhan lab? I never changed, it was the Wuhan lab. But other people said, oh, it's a cave from 2,000 miles away with bats. Then they blamed France, they blamed Italy, they blamed everybody. It ultimately came back to Wuhan, which is what I said. I never changed. But they said, uh, there's a problem over there. A lot of bodies lying around this uh, particular facility. I knew what the facility was, and I said, uh, that's not good. But who would have ever thought? And we did a phenomenal job. We never got credit for that Look, kind of credit. We got credit for a great economy. We got a lot of credit, too. But we really did a great job in that. Nobody knew what the hell it was. Uh, but uh, they said you would. There was nobody that could ever have come even close to us. Uh, look at how the farmers were doing. And by that time, we had a deal with China. We had everything cooked, and we made USMCA. Everybody said you'll never be able to change NAFTA. Remember NAFTA, that horrible, horrible deal, one of the worst trade deals ever made. But a vote for Donald Trump in these caucuses is a vote to secure our border. It's a vote to stop the invasion of millions of people from parts unknown. We don't even know where the hell they come from. They come from parts unknown. It's a vote to rescue our economy, and it's a vote to reclaim our democracy from crooked Joe Biden and the entire criminal class in our nation's capital. They're criminals. What they're doing with voters and what they're doing with the weaponization of the system and elections, what they're doing is incredible. I mean, I've gotten indicted more than Al Capone. <laughs> Do you know Al Capone? Scarface, you know? He had a scar from here to here, and he didn't get it, I always say, playing tiddlywinks, right? He was a rather rough guy. And if he had dinner with you, if he didn't like the way you smiled, they'd shoot you the next day. You'd get killed, probably the next night. But you'd, get, you'd be gone. He got indicted less than me. I got indicted because I said we had a rigged election. <laughs> but unlike every other candidate in this race with me, you know, in your heart that I will always put America first. We put America first, and with God's help, our job will get done, and it'll get done like it did before. We did more. I mean, we rebuilt our military. We got the biggest tax cuts in history. We got the biggest regulation cuts in history. Right to try. Hopefully, nobody in this room needs it. But, you know, we have space age. We have the greatest doctors and laboratories in the world, and uh, people couldn't use it. If uh, they were sick, they'd go to Asia, they'd go to Europe, they'd go all over the world. If they had money, if they didn't have money, they'd go home and they'd die. I got right to try so that we could take something that wouldn't be approved for five or six years by the FDA. I moved that up, too, by the way. That used to be 12 years. We cut it down in half. And we'll, it was going further. But right to try gave you the right to sign a very quick document and get whatever it is out there. You know, they used to say, we can't do that, sir. There's great liability. Supposing they die, I say they're terminal. They're terminal. Only terminal. You have to be very, very sick. People that are very sick that... Uh, you wouldn't believe the results. The results are uh, thousands and thousands of people are living right now. You know, the uh, laboratories didn't want it because a lot of people would die, and they didn't want that in the record. Uh, doctors didn't want it. Our country didn't want it because we didn't want the liability. And they signed something saying you have no liability whatsoever. There's nobody has any liability, but we got to do it. They're terminally ill. These are terminally ill people, and we are saving thousands of lives. And it sort of worked out the opposite for some of these great laboratories because instead of having liability, they're showing it really works because you're bringing people that were going to be dead very soon and you're bringing them back to life. And, uh, you know, some of the stuff that they've done is incredible. So I'm very honored by that. They've been trying to get that for 54 years and they didn't get it, but I got it. And, and we had to get it through Congress, too. Thank you. And that had to go through Congress. You know, much of it, you hear about all these executive orders, but a lot of the stuff to get it done and get it done right has to go through Congress. And 
We got that through Congress. It was a great victory. And uh, victories cannot come soon enough for our country. As we speak, the last remnants of our open and broken border are crumbling into rubble as millions and millions of people storm into the United States in the largest illegal mass migration in the history of the world. There's never been a country in the world, third world country, banana republic. There's never been a, a, anything like what you're watching on television. And they pretend like, uh, like they've got it under control. Last month, they set a record. Hundreds of thousands of people, bigger than practically any city in your great state. I think bigger just about than any city came in just last month. And numbers like nobody, and they pretend like it's, uh, it's under control. It's not under control, it's totally out of control. And part of the reason they want them to come in is, in my opinion, because look, they're not stupid. Anybody that can cheat on an election like that is not stupid, okay? Because they're professionals at cheating. But anybody that can cheat like that, they're not stupid people. So there's two things and then a third. Number one, they're stupid. Number two, right? right. Number two, they hate our country. And number three, they want those people to vote. And that's a bad one. That's the one that scares us most. And I'm telling you, they're signing people. That's what they're doing. And I believe now that that's why they're letting, allowing these people to come in. People that don't speak our language they're signing them up to vote. And I believe that's why you're having millions of people pour into our country. And it could very well affect the next election. And I believe that's why they're doing it, because uh, they know what they're doing. You know, if they could do as well in running the country, in making deals with other countries so we don't get ripped off every time. Every deal we have is a horrible deal. I mean, Europe is laughing at us. Look at Ukraine. We're in for 200 billion. Europe is in for 20 billion. Why? And Europe is a very similar size when you add up the countries, very similar to the economy. So they're in for 20 and we're in for 200. When I was uh, doing NAFTA, I went, I said, you know, uh, the NAFTA deal is so unfair. But NATO, you take a look at NATO, every deal is horrible. I've ne I haven't seen any deals that are like good deals. So we renegotiated with South Korea, with Japan, with Abi, who was so great. But, you know, what happened to Abi? It was horrible. He was a great. Great gentleman, great man. But we renegotiated the Japanese deal for the farmers and for manufacturers, and it worked out to be really good. Uh, we started off with a horrible base because the deal was so, it was so one-sided. You know, they sell millions of cars. And we, I said, Shinzo, let me ask you a question. How many cars are we selling in the middle of Tokyo? How many Chevrolets are we selling in the middle of Tokyo? I don't believe any. That's right. We have none. You know, it was a very one-sided deal. And uh, we changed it around a lot especially for the farmers, frankly, especially for the farmers. But we changed, we changed all of these things around, and we were, we were rocking and rolling. If you look back uh, 10 years, if you look back five years, you'd see that there was a statistic that was scary. China was going to overtake us in 2018 or 2019. And we were hitting it so good, and we picked up so much. We left them in the dust. We left them in the dust. They never even came close. And I always say, if we have a smart president, that will never happen. But now we're giving it all back to China, what we're doing. And, you know, he wants to end the tariffs. These tariffs are bringing in billions of dollars that I put on China. No president's ever given, no president's ever gotten 10 cents, not 10 cents. And he wants to give it back. Uh, so far, he hasn't been able to because it's so much money that he hasn't been able to pull it off, but he would like to give it back, the tariffs. And if they do that, if they do give that back, China will literally take over this country economically. It's a, it would be a horrible thing. But, you know, putting those tariffs on was not the easiest thing to do. But they paid us hundreds of billions of dollars. And as I say, I always say proudly, and my people say, please don't take Iowa for granted. Don't take us, sir. Please don't take, you can't, because I always say, how the hell do I lose Iowa? I got the farmers of this country, $28 billion. How the hell do I? And they're always saying, right? But they're always saying, sir, please don't. I said, I'll, I said, I'll take my chances. Nobody else. Look, Ron DeSanctimonious was against the farmers, and he was against ethanol. Uh, Nikki is against farmers. She wanted to decimate Social Security. So did he, by the way. He wanted to move the age up to 70. She wanted to go higher than that. I mean, and these people, one thing about a politician, because I dealt on the other side of politics a lot, too. 
One thing about Apollo, they always go back to what they originally had. That's their, that's their inclination. They always go back to what they, where they originally were. But I was for all of your things, and I was for your ethanol. And ethanol, let me tell you, it's always a battle with ethanol. It's not easy. But I saved ethanol, and uh, they will get rid of it immediately. They're going to get rid of it immediately, I can tell you that. Despite, even though all of a sudden they become ethanol people, you know, this, this industry is going to give Ron a little party, like 12 people are going to show up. Because of his stance on ethanol. Tell him to go back a year and a half and take a look at his, it's a, his real stance. A record 300,000 illegal aliens were detected crossing the border in December alone. That's the largest number in history. That's the biggest number in history. And under the Trump administration, we had the most secure border in the United States in U.S. history three years ago. So you went from the most secure border with, by the way, the least number of drugs pouring into our country in 22 years, okay? And that's not acceptable. Look, the way, if you want to stop the drug epidemic into our country, which is killing, in my opinion, 250, 300,000 people. They always say 100. It's not 100. It's much more than that. You know what to do, right? Do you know what to do? Vote for Trump. <laughs> says, vote for Trump. Well, that's another way of saying, yeah, you could say, that's very good. I like that. No, the death penalty for drug dealers. If you do the death penalty, you stop it. You know, a drug dealer on average, will kill 500 people during his or her lifetime, right? 500 people. When you think of it, that's really bad news. But on average, will kill 500 people during his or her lifetime. And when I went to China and I saw President Xi, I said, do you have a problem with drugs? No, 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 we do not. Oh, uh, why? Quick trial, quick trial. I knew what quick trial meant, right? Quick trial. Unlike our trials that last, you know, 400 years, except if I'm being tried. <laughs> If I'm being tried, they go quickly. They set records. If I'm being tried for bullshit, they go fast. <laughs> Mine, I'm setting records. They've never seen in Washington, D.C., they've never seen speed like that. Other guys, they'd be in court for seven years. Mine gets done like two months. It's nobody's ever seen. What a, what a two-tiered system of justice we have in this country. It's horrible. It's horrible. But uh, if you want to solve the drug problem, that's what you do. I said, you have no, we don't have any. They used to have a fantastic problem. They used to have a tremendous problem with drugs. It ruined the country, actually. Japan took over China. A smaller nation took over China because they had the opium fields. They had, they had drugs, tremendous drugs, and uh, amount of drugs. And uh, now they don't have drugs. And it's, uh, they do it because uh, if they, they say, if you get caught selling drugs, you get the death penalty, and you go quickly. It's a quick trial. And everyone said, well, let's get the hell out of here. The drug dealer said, uh, darling, I think we're going to head to the United States. Let's sell them in the United States. So that's the way. But I'm not sure this country is ready for it. They should be ready for it because uh, they're destroying our country. They're ruining families. Uh, many people in this room, I'm sure, have been greatly affected by drug-addicted kids who would have never, that would have never happened if you if you didn't have these drugs pouring in, usually mostly over the southern border. But we had it down to a record low for about 25 years just uh, in what we were doing. We built 561 miles of border wall. You know, I always get a kick out of this because they say, oh, you only built 59 miles. No, no. If there's a piece of two by four laying on the ground that's 40 years old and rotted, but it used to be like to stop a bicycle from coming, whatever. If there's a little piece of steel laying there and it hasn't been painted in 100 years, it used to be there many, many years ago, laying just on the ground flat, nothing else. They consider that a renovation when you build a big monster wall. So they say, no, no, he only built 58 miles. No, no, we built 561 miles of wall. And that's why we had the safest border. That, and in all fairness, Mexico giving us 28,000 Soldiers worth billions of dollars, by the way, 28,000 soldiers. I went to the president. I said, you have to give us 28,000 soldiers for the border. No, 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 we won't do that. The head of the State Department, who was very much involved with Mexico, said, uh, uh, you'll never get it, sir. We've been trying to get that for years. You'll never get it. I said, no, we'll get it, 100%. And we'll also get Remain in Mexico, and we'll also get catch and release. You know what catch and release? We, they catch them and release them in our country. Well, we got catch and release. We release them in Mexico. We catch them and release them in Mexico. And we got nine other things that were just as bad. We got nine other things. You know, your medical component. If you're very sick, you don't come into our country. I'm sorry. You can't come in. You know, we don't want people catching 
various diseases that were uh, very prevalent and are prevalent right now. So we did a great job. But they said that won't happen. And the chief representative, a very handsome guy, good-looking guy, came in to see me representing the president of Mexico, who happens to be a great guy. He's a socialist, but you can't help. You can't have everything, right? But he's a great guy, actually. He's a friend of mine. But I said, you have to do this. But he came over, and I said, here's what we're going to need. I told the uh, person representing, you know, dealing with Mexico from the State Department, I said, here's what you have to do. Give me your top 10 things. And I went to Border Patrol, Brandon Judd. I went to Tom Holman. Great. These are great people, by the way. And I said, give me your top 10 things that you need. Sir, they'll never do it. They'll give it 100%. The person, State Department, a woman who was really very good, but she never won a battle with Mexico because they wouldn't do anything, right? Because they, you know, they don't uh, listen to our people. So I said, no, they'll do everything. Give me the top 10. So I took the top 10 things from everybody, add them up. We took the top 10 things, all tough to get. Like, remain in Mexico is tough, right? You know, you don't remain here, you remain. You got to take a look at Tijuana. Until Biden came in, he just let everybody flow right into the country. It's so, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. But I said, no, we'll get him. So he comes in. I say, listen, we need 28,000 soldiers free of charge. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. He looked at me like I was crazy. I said, no, you're going to do that, 100%. He goes, uh, I said, we're going to need to uh, remain in Mexico. In other words, everybody has to remain in Mexico. They can't come into the United States. They've got to remain in your country. And then if we want them, we'll take them. And if we don't want them, they'll go back to their other country. No, 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 we won't do that. Then I said, catch and release. We're going to catch them. We're going to release them in your country. No, no, no. I said, no, you'll do it. No, you will. No, you, sir, you don't understand me. I will not do that. I will not. I said, no, no. OK, you ready? 100% you're going to do it. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't understand it. He said, I won't do it. I said, you're going to do it. And here's the story. If you don't do it, I have legislation in front of me that I had the right to sign. I'm going to tax all of the cars that you stole from our country when you manufacture them. You know, they stole 32% of the manufacturing ability of the United States over the years, not through me, before me. Every car coming across and every product coming across from Mexico into the United States is going to have a tariff of 25% on it. And that's more money than all of the stuff that we're talking about put together. And he said, he's going like this. <laughs> I can't breathe, you know? It's like a little choke, a little choke going on. But he said, uh, may I have a few minutes to make a phone call? I said, let me guess, you're calling the president, right? Give him my regards, but try and be back within five minutes. He comes back within five minutes. He said, sir, it would be a great honor to supply you with 28,000 soldiers. It would be a great honor to have all these people, including the criminals, remain in Mexico. We would love to have that. That's just what we want. That's just what we need. Gave me every single thing. And that person in the State Department, a really nice woman, but she wasn't much of a negotiator, frankly. She said, uh, I've never seen anything like it. I've been here for 25 years. I've never seen anything. I got every single thing. Then when Biden came in, he gave away almost all of it, right? Ooh. Gave away all of it. It's, uh, it's crazy. And Ron DeSanctimonious and Nikki Haley and all the rest of the pack will never do what it takes to secure the border. They'll never do what it takes to make our country great again. They're never going to do it. I know them. I know them all very well. They don't have what it takes. Nikki Haley has been in the pocket of the open borders establishment donors her entire career, and uh, she's a globalist, you know? She likes the globe. I like America first. The people in this room like America first. And Nikki Haley's campaign is being funded by Biden donors. Did you know that? Biden donors, because they're trying to get her, like in particular, here we're doing so well. I think they've sort of given up. Do you notice they're sort of like out of here? But uh, in New Hampshire, they have a lot of Biden donors and contributors uh, putting money into her campaign. That tells you that should be enough to stop her right there. Well, she stopped. Hey, listen, they had a poll last week. It was a classic, just to show you how fake the media is. So the headline was, Haley surges. I said, uh-oh, this is a bad. I better read this little thing. So I went up seven points to 74, OK? I went up seven. She went up two points, and Ron DeSanctimonious went down one. So instead of being down two points, she was even with Ron DeSanctimonious now. So the headline, and she was at 10. And he was at 10, either 10 or 11. I was at 72 or 74. And the headline was Haley Surges. 
That's because it's fake. The media is fake. So, anyway, we like these little quips. You think they're on the teleprompter? You think Biden could tell you stories like that? He'd get lost. Can't find his way off the stage. Now, think of it. You think he ever goes off teleprompter? He's no good when he's reading the teleprompter. He read it today. He got all confused. He didn't know where the hell he was. He's reading about, he's saying that I'm a threat to democracy, and he had a hard time with it. She opposed my border wall, Nikki. She condemned my strong borders policy, and in 2016, she stabbed the Republican Party in the back by siding with Barack Hussein Obama against a thing called the Trump travel ban. We didn't want to have people from countries that hate us coming into our country. We don't want our shopping centers blown up, if it's okay with you. We don't want our people uh, killed and decimated and bombed and shot and everything else. So, and it passed. It went through the Supreme Court, and it just passed. And, you know, we had no uh, terrorism problems in this country, and the whole world didn't have. You know, i got to tell you, because he's a great man. He's actually a great leader. He's a very tough man. He's the toughest man in Europe, one of the tough, probably the toughest leader maybe anywhere. Viktor Orban from Hungary. Anybody hear of him? He's tough. <laughs> but he's a very good man. But they asked him a question. What would you do if you were President Biden? What would you do? What would you do? Because the whole world is blowing up. Israel, Ukraine, and Russia. The whole Middle East is just ready. It's a counter. It wasn't that way three years ago. Three years ago, everything was good. Iran was not going to do anything. Nobody was. We were going to get, we were getting along with everybody. They knew. Uh, North Korea is now acting up again, as you know, Kim Jong un. But he liked me. The press hates when I say that I liked him. He liked me. They hate it. They say it's terrible. No, it's not a bad thing. You know, he's got a lot of nuclear weapons. It's nice if he likes you a little bit. He wouldn't return Obama's phone calls, he didn't want to even meet with him. But I, they said, what would you do? And they really said, I mean, Orban was incredible. He said, what I'd do is I'd resign from office immediately, and I'd say, bring Trump in here to run. Because when he ran this world, we didn't have problems with Russia, with Ukraine, with Israel, with Iran, with China. We didn't have problems with anybody. They feared him. Now, he said they feared him. You know? He said they feared him. I don't want to say that. That's him saying it, because I don't want to say they feared me, but they respected me, and they respected our country, and they feared our country. But uh, he said they feared him, and they weren't going to mess around. But it's true, we didn't have problems with anything. And we didn't have problems at the border. We had the most secure border we've ever had. Everything was nice. And this guy could have gone, you know, he likes going to the beach. Somebody on his campaign said, you look great in a bathing suit. Now, when you know, what is he, 82 or 81? Like, there are, I, look, I'm not that far behind. But I'm 100% up here. I feel I'm better than I was 25 years ago. I think. I think I'd know it. I think I'd know it. I really, maybe you, maybe you know it, but you don't want to know it. You know, that could be also like that. But I think I'd know it, you know, when you say, it's great to be in Idaho. Is that where we are? The worst is when he said, it's great to be in Florida. And he was here. There were no, no palm trees here. Did they have palm trees here? Not too many, right? No, but I think, it, but, but. He said that. He said, when Trump was president, the whole world was safe. There was nobody going to play games. They feared him. He said they feared him. But let's say they respected me. But they feared our country. And there were no problems. And we didn't have any, um, we had no problems with uh, Islamic people that want to come in and blow the hell out of our cities. We had nothing. Now, I didn't want to say that when I was president, but, you know, we had gotten through three and a half years, and uh, I really wanted to say it, but I didn't like the idea of saying it, because then the next day something happens, I said, boy, do we look. It happened to them. They would say, well, we're doing fairly well. They weren't doing great, but they were doing fairly. And then Israel was attacked the following day, right? You saw that. They said, well, we're doing pretty well there, too, and we've been very nice. Well, they were so nice that uh, it's the worst problem that Israel has had, certainly, Probably, possibly ever. We're going to find out pretty soon because it's moving along rapidly. And the biggest problem is we have no leadership on our side. We have no idea what we're doing. We have no idea what to ask for. We have no leadership on our side. But Viktor Orban, most respected man, probably the toughest man in Europe, maybe beyond Europe, uh, he made that statement. I was very honored by that statement because I'm only about making our country great, saving our country, and I want to help the world if possible. If possible, we'll help the world. A lot of it you can do with a phone call. I mean, I can tell people in a phone. I can say, you can't do that. You can't do that. I told it to 
uh, a very nice, good friend of mine, the head of, you know, France. So nice, they make nice champagne and wine. And they were going to tax our companies. Our companies were going to be taxed very substantially in France. They were putting a big tax on American companies. And I had my people call up and uh, say, we're not going to allow that to happen. And they didn't care. And my people spent two months. They're capable people, but they couldn't do it. And I said, let me do it. And I spoke to uh, Macron. Do you know Macron? He's a nice man. He's actually a nice man. But he's for France, you know? I'm for the USA, and he's from France. And I said, Emmanuel, how are you? Oh, Donald, I am fine. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to talk to you. Thank you very much. You might not like me so much after this call. How are you? <laughs> I understand, Emmanuel, that you're going to be taxing American companies doing business in France. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's, uh, that has passed. Um, I'm so sorry to tell you, but that has passed. I said, well, I don't think it's passed. I really don't think it's passed. Or if it has, you can unpass it. Because if you don't take that tax of American, you know, I want to protect American companies. That means you and a lot of people. Why should they tax American companies? I said, if you don't take that tax off, I'm going to tax at 100%. I'm going to tax every bottle of champagne and every bottle of wine that comes into the United States of France. And I know that's a soft spot for them, right? That's like a soft spot. And he goes, no, 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 you cannot do that. That is not fair. I said, that's OK. You got five minutes to tell me yes. And after that, I'm sorry. Calls me back in five minutes. Oh, we have agreed to do that. We are taking off all of the. I did that in about four minutes. I'll give you added totally up. My guys were working on it for two and a half months and getting nowhere. But you can do a lot of things if you're president. If you know, if you know how to do it, if you know how to do it, and and I still remain friendly. I mean, you don't have to burn the bridges. I mean, he respects it. They respect that more than some dope that doesn't know what's happening. You know, they respect you more. They like, they almost like you more. You know, they, they came out, all these guys, they like me. Uh, Boris called. He wants to come. They all want to come see me. They like me. And yet there's nobody been tougher, like Russia. They all say, oh, Russia, Russia, Russia. I ended the Russian pipeline. It was called Nord Stream 2. That was the biggest thing they've ever done. And I ended it. And Biden, his first day in office, approved it and let it be built. And I had it stopped. And Putin would say, you know, they say we're friendly and that you're nice to me. I'd hate like hell to see if you were not nice to me. Because think of it, I ended that. I had tariffs and I had all sorts of uh, things on Russian, Russian citizens. But I got along with Putin. That's not a bad thing. But there's nobody. He would tell you, the historians will someday tell you, there's nobody that's been tougher on Russia. And Russia would have never, as we said, would have never, ever in a million years gone into Ukraine. That only started when I left. Once I was out, all of a sudden they start forming. And I thought he was doing it for negotiation purposes. But, and they could have had a deal, by the way. They could have had, that could have been a deal. That, that's a deal that would have been easy to make. And instead of a deal, it's now all those... Millions, I think. I think the numbers are going to be much greater than you're hearing. You know, when you see that they knocked down nine buildings in a city in Ukraine and two people were hurt. No, no, no. Many people were killed. Many people were killed. I think when you see the real numbers, you're going to see numbers that are shocking how bad they are. And that's something that would have been easy to done. Even without a deal, he wouldn't have done it. Because part of the reason he did it is Biden let energy prices, barrels of oil go up so high that they made a fortune. So. They did it for that because he was making it. It went over $100 a barrel. And at that, he could prosecute a war and make a fortune. He's the only guy that ever had a war and made an absolute fortune. And it shouldn't have happened. And this guy is always talking, you know, the Green New Deal and all this stuff. But in the meantime, he's allowed a lot of these countries that, let's say, they're not particularly friendly to us, to make a fortune because the oil price went up so high. It's a shame. The guy is grossly incompetent. What's happened is horrible, because I had it at $40 a barrel. At $40 a barrel, he didn't have the money to go in and fight Ukraine. At $100 a barrel, the guy's making a fortune. So with Biden, he, he keeps the oil price up, and it's very high now, but now he's going to do something artificial to get it down for the election. Watch. But as soon as the election's over, it's, it's going to be over for you. Uh, you know, he tapped into the strategic reserves that I had so much to do with bringing it up. And then uh, took it almost down to the lowest point. It was down to the lowest point, they say, in history, because he wanted to keep gas prices low during the, that, It wasn't meant for that. But he wanted to keep gas prices low so that the election would go and you wouldn't have had to pay, you know, $9 
a gallon, you'd pay two and a half, three dollars a gallon. It's called artificial pricing. And he did that. And uh, as soon as it was over, it went way up. Now it's still high, but it's coming down because uh, they're making all sorts of moves on other countries. We're getting oil now from Venezuela. We're getting oil now from Iran. The people I wouldn't let them buy from Iran, they're now sending us oil. Can you believe it? The whole thing is crazy. Nikki Haley would sell you out, and Ron DeSanctimonious would sell you out so quickly. And uh, they're going to all grant amnesty to Biden's illegal aliens when Biden comes in. And sadly, the establishment losers and sellouts lagging far behind us in the Republican primary cannot be trusted on taxes, on trade, or on anything else. You can't trust them on taxes. They want to raise your taxes like crazy. They're globalists, and they always will be, and they always want to take care of global countries. And somewhere along the line, they think that's good for us. I think they probably believe it, or they're, or they're crooked. You know, some are crooked. I really believe some are crooked. But uh, I think some probably believe it. They can't explain why, because it doesn't make sense. No, it's about America. It's about America first. We have to take care of our own country. And we can help others, but we have to take care of our own country. There's nothing you can do to change these people. They'll betray you just like they betrayed me. I mean, I told you the De Sanctimonious, I got him elected. He went up like a rocket ship as soon as I pressed that little button. Now it's truth. Truth is the best, right? But is everybody on truth, I hope? Truth is the one. That's the one. But at that time, there was no truth. It was uh, before, and I tweeted a little statement, and uh, he went up like a rocket ship. He went from getting killed. He was dead. He was going to leave the race to winning the race just with one little press of a button. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? But there's never been anything like it from, you know, from the standpoint of, of uh, an endorsement. So he won. But uh, Nikki said she would have news conference. This is a great president. I will never run against him, right? You've seen that. Have you seen her clips? We have about nine of them. There are a lot more than that, but we don't want to bore you. But no, I will never, ever even consider running against the president. He was a great president. Then a year and a half later, I've decided to run for the president. So oh, great. I don't know. There's something about a lot of these politicians, because I don't consider myself a politician. I consider myself like you, we're workers. We know how to do things, make money. But, you know, and if she said she wanted to run, let her say it up front. Don't let her just play you around like that for years. And, you know, I would never run against the president. He's so good. And she actually said I was a great president, and I was a great president. Look at all the things we did. With against, uh, <laughs> yeah, I love what they say. A lot of people say you are, you are. That's sort of cute. And a lot of people don't understand what they mean by that. <laughs> but Iowa does not want politicians like Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley, who both support a 23 percent national sales tax, which is a disaster. You don't want politicians like Ron and Nikki, who both want to gut Social Security and Medicare. And, hurt our seniors. And, you know, if you look at it, Ron voted three times to raise the retirement age on Social Security over 70. And Nikki would take the retirement age to way, way higher than even the number that Ron is talking about. I don't know why they want to do that. You know, we have so much wealth underground. We have so much liquid gold, I call it, underground. You don't need to do this. You don't have to destroy our senior citizens. When we drill, baby, drill, you're gonna, we're going to make so much money, we'll be supplying the world. Unlike DeSanctis and Nikki Haley, we'll always protect Social Security and Medicare for our seniors. Just remember that when you have to vote. Uh, we're gonna, although I think, is there anybody in this room that's not going to vote for Trump? Just out of, no, don't raise your hand. It could be dangerous. Don't. They're going to say he incited an insurrection, these stupid bastards. He incited an insurrection. No, but is there, quietly raise your hand. Is there anybody here that's not going to vote for Trump? That's very nice. They're actually, they're upset by even the question. They're upset. They don't even like that question. Well, I appreciate it. But on my first day back in the White House, I will terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration. We'll stop the invasion on our southern border and begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. We have no choice. We have no choice. Not like we have a choice. I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement and 
all of the people working on immigration, you know, they're not even allowed to work. They sign people up and they, they're brought into the inner sanctums of the country and just leave the border open. They don't even want the border. How about where the governor of Texas, who endorsed me recently, Governor Abbott, which was a nice endorsement. He's become much more popular since he endorsed me, actually. But he endorsed me, and uh, they're fighting because the federal government wants to cut the barbed wire. You know the barbed wire? They call it razor wire, but it's pretty tough stuff. But they have it along the Texas border so that, because Texas is just being inundated. What, what they're doing to Texas and Arizona is just horrible. And they're in court now because uh, they, they're cutting. Did you ever see them? They're with uh, splicers. They're cutting. They're cutting sections. They want people to come. Out. They're cutting it. And the people are waiting to be let into the country. The whole thing is crazy. And uh, we're not going to be doing that stuff. We're going to be we're going to be bringing our country back. You know, people say you're conservative. It's not a question of we're, we're all. I think everybody in this room is the same. We're people of common sense, right? People of common sense. Liberal, conservative, we're people of common sense. I mean, you got to have borders and you have to have honest elections. And everything else is sort of, almost everything else is less important. But you have to have borders if you're going to have a country. And you have, to have, you have to have free and fair elections. No, it's a shame. You'll never have a, an honest election with a mail-in ballot. Remember that. You never. Jimmy Carter said it. You know, they formed the Carter Commission. And he was there with a couple of other respected senators, older senators. And... They came up, and the big point of their report was never do mail-in ballots because you'll never have an honest election. He said that a long time ago. And France just went to uh, same-day voting, all paper ballots, and voter ID. And they had 36 million people vote for Macron. They voted for Macron just to bring him back so he's not going to be too upset. No, they voted for Macron. He won the election. And by 10 o'clock in the evening, everybody went home. and. They had a real election, you know. They have watermarked paper now, which is very secure. They can't really produce it. You, can, you can't copy it. It's watermarked because they'll try and cheat there, too. But uh, it's the best system there is. It's really the system that we started with when you get right down to it. But it's better because the paper technology is incredible, what they can do. And we'll immediately restore and expand the Trump travel ban for those countries that are Terror plagued, and they want to come into our country and hurt our people. We're not going to let them come into our country. They ended that. They want everybody to come in. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Yes, you killed nine people, but we think you're going to be much better now. Not one thing has gotten better, if you think about it, under crooked Joe Biden. The country's a mess. We're a laughing stock all over the world. Under the Trump administration, you were better off. Your family was better off. Your neighbors were better off. Your communities were better off, and our country was better off. The whole country was better off. America was stronger, richer, safer, and more confident. And it's not even close. When I was behind the beautiful, resolute desk at the Oval Office, and it is a beauty, I will say, it's no wonder the same corrupt forces that have been fighting us every step of the way are now breaking every rule and shattering every norm in a lawless attempt to keep us from defeating them at the ballast box. Nobody's ever seen what's happened right now. What's, and it's a double-edged sword, you know? It can happen the other way, too. It's never happened, uh, the weaponization of justice, like they're doing right now. The DOJ is very corrupt. What they're doing is very corrupt. People aren't going to take it. Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. He's weaponizing law enforcement for a high-level election interference. It's all about election interference. And I don't even know if it's him, because I think he's grossly incompetent. But he's surrounded by people that are fascists and communists, and they're vicious, and they're very smart. For example, as I was landing for this visit, I was informed that the corrupt New York State Attorney General, Letitia James, she's a corrupt person, is now demand and New York is going so bad with the crime, it's like you can't even walk down to buy a loaf of bread. Letitia James, a real bad one, is now demanding that I pay $370 million in penalties where I did absolutely nothing wrong. My financial statements, you've been reading about it, are great. They're great. Uh, the man who did the check of the finance said, one of the best financial statements I've ever seen. My financial statements are great. And they're very conservative, just the exact opposite of what the highly political and totally corrupt New York State Attorney General was trying to say before she got to see my statements. She ran for office on a, I will get Trump. Did you ever see her? I will get Trump. I will get him. I'm going to get him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to get Trump. If a Republican ever said that, they'd have him put in jail for insurrection. 
She and the judge fraudulently valued Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, which is probably the greatest home in America by far, at $18 million. Now, it sounds like a lot, but it's not, because it was good for their narrative doing that, when, and it was fraudulent for them to do that, when, in fact, it's worth 50 to 100 times that amount. We had people come in a billion dollars, a billion five, whatever, but it's a very valuable property. But they said, the judge said it was $18 million. I had people call up, I'll take five. They never use the New York State statute. They have a statute that they use. It's vicious, vicious. They never used the statute for this before. I was not allowed a jury. I had no jury. It's up to a judge who comes out of the clubhouses of New York. Think of that. How would you like to be in that position? There was no victim because the banks made a lot of money. Good, great loans. The banks testified. In particular, one bank testified. Great, great. Everything was great. There was no default. There was no damages. There was no nothing. Only a very happy bank that got 100% of its money back and in addition to getting its money back, made tremendous profits. This case should never have been brought. It should be in the commercial division. Uh, the rig judge would not let it go, that he wouldn't allow it to leave his side. He took it, and usually it gets sent in because of its complexity, although it wasn't complex because it turned out to be very simple. Uh, the statement is phenomenal. They said the best statement he's ever seen, and it should have never been allowed to be presented to this judge. It should have gone into the commercial division, like all other cases like this. But he kept it, and he's a radical Trump hater. He hates Trump, like with a passion, I guess. I don't know what it is. He has a passion for hating Trump. And I should have never been gagged. They had a gag order. They wouldn't let me talk. I can't talk about certain very important things, much more important than people understand. The judge ruled that I was guilty before he even started the case. In fact, I got a call, sir, you've been found guilty. I said, no, the case starts in two weeks. I know, but he found you guilty before the case starts. <laughs> Other than that, it was an extremely fair case. <laughs> now the corrupt AG just announced a little while before I walked into the doors. So if you don't mind, I was a little bit angry when I walked in. Did you notice the anger? Maybe not. But uh, the corrupt AG wants $370 million as a fee for what I did, and I did nothing wrong, nothing. 370 million, which is much more than any loan, much more, that was peanuts. This is weaponization at a level that nobody's ever seen. So violence is out of control. People are fleeing New York. Businesses are fleeing New York. Car thefts are up 191% in New York, 191%. They should pay me. But it's prosecutorial misconduct, and it's a DOJ witch hunt because it's in total coordination with Biden's deal. So they're charging me $370 million fine for making a very small loan that the bank wanted to make because that's what they do. They loan money, and they love my statement. They're like me. But I borrowed the money for that reason. The bank wanted me to, but you know, they are in the business of loaning money. That's how they make money. And it was a great loan for them. They got all their money. They, they actually testified. There was no default during the term of the loan. I actually paid the loan back early. It was a great loan. I'm very underleveraged. We have great cash, great everything. We built a great company. And these uh, fascists, what they're doing to our country is just unbelievable. So I did nothing wrong. It was every, in every way, it was like a perfect, the bank was so happy. They testify, no, everything was good. Same thing with every other thing. They were looking at things. 370 million for doing nothing wrong. I took a loan, I paid the loan back, and they charged me 370 million, which I guess is more than two times the loan, something like that. But as a very intelligent person just stated on truth, New York AG Letitia James has decided to increase the amount she wants from Donald Trump in civil trial. Initially, she requested $250 million and he did nothing wrong. Did nothing wrong. They only want to hurt us because they don't want us running for office, because we're leading Biden, crooked Joe, by a lot. And this is all this is. This is a terrible intrusion into politics and into our way of life. But now she wants $370 million, and she wants it fast. And 
It's a disgrace. I've never seen anything like it. I hope everyone can see this for what it really is. This is the gentleman writing. He goes, he goes, this is nothing more than a shakedown of a leading candidate of her opposing political party. She thinks she's going to make hay with Washington. But this is a coordination with the DOJ. The DOJ is doing this case with them. In fact, they moved one of the top political operatives from the DOJ in Washington into the DA's office and into also the attorney general's office. How, how would you like to be me? You think my life's a lot of fun? Our founding fathers would be turning in their graves if they could see this. No American should be okay with a political party being weaponized against their enemies. This is not democracy, he says. This is not constitutional. This is wrong in every aspect, and the judge and the AG should be arrested and punished accordingly. And how much longer can we allow this to happen in our country? And all of this is being done because we're beating them so badly at the polls. In the new morning console poll, we're trouncing the Republican primary field with Trump at 66, De Sanctimonious at 11, and Haley at 11. That's not bad. You know, we're beating uh, DeSantis in Florida. Poll just came out. I'm at 88. He's at like 11. Because the people got wise to him. He really, I think he screwed up his career pretty good, I'll tell you. But he deserves it. We're also leading big here in Iowa, but again, take nothing for granted. We had the uh, Des Moines Register come out with a great poll recently. They've never been really nice to me. They've always, I've always been leading, but uh, I'd, I'd end up doing better. But they were respectful. Actually, it's a very professional pollster, the Des Moines Register. Uh, but it's amazing. I mean, the numbers have just been amazing in Iowa. Uh, the numbers are amazing in New Hampshire. But you know, polls are a little bit like they're a little bit like the media. Uh, they have polls that lie. They had one poll in New Hampshire where I was only leading by six or seven points. You know, normally you'd be happy, but we're leading by maybe 30 points or something. But that caused a big stir. You know, everybody said, oh, Nikki's doing great. But, you know, it's a crooked poll. In the general election, we're crushing crooked Joe Biden by historic margins in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, Ohio, Florida. And every other swing state, if there are any. The radical left Democrats, we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. Not going to allow it to happen. A little hot. You know, this, this room wasn't designed exactly for this many people. I'm sitting up here, it's like 200 degrees in this damn room. I'm trying to be cool, but if you don't mind, I'm going to just do this a little bit. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I'm being, and it's true. It's true. I'm being indicted for you. I'm being indicted for you. Never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. I'm not going to let it happen. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way. But this is big stuff. This is far more than a campaign. This is the greatest political movement in the history of our country. I look around, I see all the MAGA shirts and Trump and Trump and MAGA, MAGA, MAGA. I like that beautiful woman back there with her Trump sweatshirt. I like that sweatshirt a lot. But together, we ended the NAFTA disaster, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with that great, greatest trade deal maybe ever made, USMCA. And all of you are beneficiaries. You, get, you were getting killed for decades with NAFTA. Now you got, you know why I know it's good? Because Mexico and Canada are calling every single day they want to renegotiate the deal. They said, nope, the deal's no good for them. That makes me feel good, you know? Because I'm negotiating for you. Because with NAFTA, they wouldn't, they wouldn't let us negotiate anything. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our treasury when no other president had gotten literally 10 cents from China. Not one president got a dime from China. I then gave the farmers of our country $28 billion straight out of the tariffs I took from China, a large part of which came to a particular state known as Iowa. Have you heard of it? Have you heard of it? And just as I promised, I also stood up for Iowa ethanol. 
and I stood up under a lot of great odds, and I did it. I did it myself. I didn't have a lot of help. I have to tell you, from some of your from some of your people, I didn't have a lot of help. I issued a historic rule declaring that E15 would be made available all year round, right, instead of the eight months, and letting them use the existing pumps, which saved hundreds of millions of dollars and created a lot of jobs that otherwise wouldn't have been created. I said, what's better, the older equipment or the new? And I'm not surprised to hear it. I hear it all the time. Well, the older pumps are much better. They're much stronger. They're made much better. I said, let's leave them, right? Let's leave them. They're actually saying it's better. Ron DeSantis spent his entire career as a raging opponent of ethanol. He will destroy ethanol. I will protect ethanol for four more years in the White House. And I think for Iowa, that's, that's a big thing. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after I win the presidency, and we win the presidency, because we're going to do it together, we, it's, it's we more than I, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled, absolutely settled and we will restore peace through strength all over our planet. And I'm the only candidate who can make this promise and mean it. I will prevent World War III. You are very close to a world war. You know, you don't have to be into it too much to know. You just have to see what's going on. You are very close to a world war. And it would be most likely a nuclear war. And if it's a nuclear war, it's obliteration. It's uh, a level of power that nobody's ever seen and that nobody can even express and that, frankly, shouldn't even be talked about. You know, we wouldn't talk about it in my administration, and nobody else did either outside in other countries. But we wouldn't talk about it. Now, every day, they're talking about nuclear, 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 nuclear. It's so devastating, it just don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. I will end Biden's inflation nightmare, save our nation from debt and economic despair. And we will, right from day one, we're going to drill, 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 baby, drill. Somebody said, an oil man told me, and he's a great guy, a very successful guy. They say, uh, he looks at a piece of land, he takes a straw. Now it has to be a paper straw, so maybe it doesn't work, you know? You know, the paper straws come wrapped in cellophane. Do you ever see this? I mean, what's going on? You got paper straws, they're wrapped in cellophane. This country's gone wild. But this man, he's such, such a great oil man, a really amazing guy. He takes a straw, and he puts it into the ground, and oil comes out. The big companies go out. They spend billions looking for oil. This guy looks just like this, just a straw, and the oil comes out. Now, we, we kid when I say that, but he's very good at finding oil. He's a fantastic guy. And uh, we know so much about the industry, and it's knowing through common sense, knowing through intelligence, knowing, you know, that's what's going to fire up our factories. Wind is not. It's intermittent. It's extremely expensive. It's 40 times more expensive. And, uh, you know, we need stuff that's not expensive. China, I see this guy, John Kerry, flying in his private jet to China to talk to them about coal. Please don't do it. In the meantime, they're building one coal plant a week, and it's now, I understand, it's even two. But talk to them about energy, talk to them about coal. And then he leaves. I think he leaves. He, oh, we had great conversations. In the meantime, they're building a plant a week. And, you know, remember this. The currents, both sea and air, they fly right over our country. You know that. The current, the water comes down the Pacific, right out of China. So when they dump their garbage in the Pacific, it comes right down along our coast on the, on the West Coast, past Los Angeles, and much of it pours onto our land, but our waters are very dirty because they dump their garbage in the ocean. And about, it's about a four- or five-day journey. The tides bring it by. Nobody ever talks about that. But the same thing with the air. When the coal spews out of their plant, when the when smokestacks are roaring because they're big industry, and that's what fires up big industry, we want clean coal. We want to take care of our miners. You know, they have clean coal. They have... Natural gas, it's fantastic. So much less expensive. They don't want you to use it anymore. They want you to use things that don't work and that won't fire up. But when they fire up their plants and all of that pollution comes over the seas and it comes right over our land, and then they want us to have clean. I say, wait a minute, we, we're going to be clean, but it's all flying. Just remember that. Does that make sense? In other words, it's all coming through the currents, through the air. It all comes. You can, they can name it. They can say exactly where it's going to be and when. And here we are, you know, working to try and compete with them. 
and they're using fossil fuel, and we're supposed to use wind. Wind. And, and by the way, you know who makes the windmills? China makes the windmills. And they say that, if you're a big believer in this, that the pollution coming from the making of those massive steel structures is so great that you can never save on the environment because it's so great, if you're a believer in that. But they're made all in Germany, and they're made in, mostly in China. Uh, we're such fools, you know, we're such stupid fools. We had a uh, very interesting time because in 2016, I used to talk about the border because the border was bad, but nothing like it is today. But I think I won maybe on the border to a certain extent. And I did such a good job that in 2020, I couldn't talk about it. You know, they wouldn't let me talk about it. My people said, well, I don't want to say like Biden. They said, you know, where he says, they wouldn't let me. They can, you're president, you can do whatever you want. But my people said, it's not a good thing to talk about it because, sir, nobody cares about it. Because I did such a good job with the border that they said, it, it, nobody wants to hear it, sir. They forgot. I did such a good job that it was no longer an issue. And that's okay. But now it's so bad, the border is a very big thing. I think the border is the economy and the border the, and inflation, which is part of economy. But uh, it's, it's something we have to talk about. And if we don't straighten it out, we're not going to have a country. We're not going to have a country. So I think the number will be more than 15 million by the end of their crazy term. And if that's the case, that's bigger than New York State. And many of these people should not be in our country. On day one, I will also cancel Crooked Joe Biden's insane ethanol killing Electric vehicle mandate. I mean, the problem is, very simple, you know, simple statement. They don't, they don't go far. I'd like to make it much more complex. It sounds like, you know, science. You know, they don't go far. The batteries are too big. They're very big, very heavy, dangerous. I just uh, picked up a new point. Uh, in cold weather, they're really bad. Dangerous in very cold weather. So you get pretty cold weather up here. I can tell you from my little 12-foot walk outside of the car. <laughs> but in cold weather. And, you know, they're very expensive to make. And they're all going to be made in China because they have the materials for that. They're going to all be made in China. So the auto workers are going to be screwed by this, this guy. But, uh, you know, now they want, you probably heard also, they want trucks to be all electric. And... If you take, like a Peterbilt, take the big 18-wheelers, whatever they are, you can go from one side, the East Coast to the West Coast, on one big, beautiful tank of diesel fuel without a stop. They can go 2,000 miles, and we can go with electric. They can go, I think I heard, you'll go, if you're lucky, 300 miles. So that would mean they'd have to do seven stops. You talk about a supply chain problem. And I met with some of the big, uh, big trucking companies, and it took me about a minute to understand this, because, you know, it uh, was supposed to be fast studies if you're president. We have one that's a very slow study. But it wouldn't matter, because they must know this. And they explained, they, one man said to me, a big guy, one of the biggest guys in the business, he said, you know, for 50 years I've been in the business, and every year the trucks got better and better, faster, stronger, more beautiful. Every year they made them better. Even the quarters behind. I said, tell me about what is it like in one of those circuits? They said, sir, it's like the most beautiful apartment you've ever... Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They have like a place where they literally live. They live in those trucks. Those trucks are everything to them. But he said, for 50 years, every single year, these trucks got better, more fuel efficient. Everything was better. It was a beautiful thing. If they make us go to electric, we will go back. 50 years, we'll be starting all over. It'll be primitive. We'll be starting all over. And it made a, a big impact on me. It's a very sad thing, what's happening. And they don't want to hear about it. Uh, they want our army tanks to be all electric, so that we so don't think of it. Now, the problem is there, they don't go far again, but the battery is so big that they'd have to pull a truck behind them. It's true. They actually have a design, the army tank, and it's pulling like this, because the batteries are massive. Like the trucking thing, too, uh, in the truck, about half of its capacity would be devoted to a battery. Can you imagine? So can you imagine? And yet, they explain this to the people in the administration. They don't care. They don't care. They really don't care. But the Army tank is a beauty. They want to be environmentally friendly as we go in and blast the crap out of some nation. <laughs> you know, we're going to go in. We're going to be environmentally friendly as we blast that our way through their front lines. But we're doing it in an environmentally friendly manner. How crazy are we? They have jets now. And I ended it 
But they, I'm sure they picked it up. Uh, they said, sir, we have a fuel that is unbelievably good in terms of the environment. These are our fighter jets, right? That I bought about. I bought, I, re I rebuilt our entire military. The entire military is rebuilt. They had jets that were 55 years old. We had fighter jets that were 55 years old. China copied our most beautiful plane ever made, I think, is the F-22. Check it out. China has a copy of it. I looked, that's an F-22, but why does that have the China flag on it? But it's an F-22. They copied it. Most beautiful plane you've ever seen. But now they want to go in a form. It's a biofuel. But I said, give me the downside. Well, sir, the downside is it's 15% less efficient. That's the difference between shooting down and being shot down, right? 15% less efficient. So why are you trying to protect? As you fly into an area that you want to obliterate, you want to do it in an environmentally friendly way. These people are crazy. And we're not going to stand for it. And all of that stuff is going to be written out on day one. It's all going out. You know the steps when you make your speech in front of millions of people and you're making the beautiful speech? Looking down to the white, that was one of the great scenes I've ever seen. Uh, by the way, I think J6 had an equal amount of people. It's the biggest crowd I believe I ever spoke to. You never hear about that, do you? You have the hostages, the J6 hostages, I call them. Nobody's been treated ever in history so badly as those people. Nobody's ever been treated in our country. But I think that, you know, they always show whatever it was, a thousand people coming down. Remember the words? March peacefully and patriotically, right? March peacefully. You ever hear Maxine Waters? You ever hear her say about what to do with Republicans? Kill them. Go in there. If they're having lunch, go in there. And if I, can you imagine if I said that? No, I said peacefully and patriotically. The whole thing is just very unfair. But those J6 hostages going to jail for 20 years and 18 years and 12 doctors, lawyers, carpenters, electricians, truck drivers, it's, it's one of the saddest things. It'll go down as one of the saddest things in the history of our country. And those people have to be many of them. I guess there's some. By the way, there was Antifa, and there was FBI. There were a lot of other people there, too, leading the charge. Leading the charge. You saw the same people that I did. But just as I did before, I'll appoint strong, highly qualified, pro-Constitution Supreme Court justices who will interpret the law as written. And I hope they do that. We have uh, some big things going in there. I just saw the Supreme Court just before I came. I got some beauties today. I had the one, and then I had the other. Uh, Supreme Court uh, is taking the case from Colorado, and so they'll make a decision. And... You know what I, I do find, and, you know, maybe say it, maybe don't, but I say it. A Democrat judge appointed by, let's say, Obama, they're down and dirty. They say, we're appointed. That's the end. When you are a Republican judge and you're appointed by, let's say, Trump, they go out of their way to hurt you so that they can show that they have been fair, fair, honorable people. It's an amazing difference. I've never seen anything like it. You appoint some of these radical left Democrats, and they, right from the beginning, you say, we're dead. And the Republican judges want to go out of their way to be fair and unbiased, and even to a point where they hurt you. And I guess uh, it's a different wiring system or something. But all I want is fair. I fought really hard to get three very, very good people, and they're great people, very smart people. And I just hope that they're going to be fair because, you know, the other side plays the ref, like Bobby Knight, the great Bobby Knight. He played the ref, you know? He'd throw chairs, he'd smack people, he'd do everything. And they'd say, Bobby, stop it! Stop it, Bobby! He was a great friend of mine. He endorsed me in Indiana. He just passed away. He was a tough guy, big, tough guy. He was great, but he was a winner. He knew how to win. He had the last undefeated team in basketball. I guess he won three, three national championships. He was a, without really the great, great player. You know, he had teams, and uh, Bobby would scream at the refs, his scream, and his people would say, Bobby, stop it, stop it. Stop it, Bobby. You're not going to win. He said, yeah, but I'm going to win on the next one. So what they do is uh, I watch him on Deface the Nation this weekend, Ladies and gentlemen, it's Donald Trump on Deface the Nation. Uh, they hate it when I say that, but it's sort of true. 
And uh, they're saying, oh, Trump owns the Supreme Court. He owns it. He owns it. If they make a decision for him, it will be terrible. It'll ruin their reputations. He owns the Supreme Court. He put on three judges. He owns the Supreme Court. If they rule in his favor, it will be horrible for them. And we'll protest at their houses. And we'll do all of the things that you see. And that puts pressure on people to do the wrong thing. What they're doing is no different than Bobby and I. They're playing the ref. I watched that. I said, man, they're really good. They're really good at it. And I just hope we get fair treatment. Uh, because if we don't, our country's in big, big trouble. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? I think so. Because they'll cover that completely differently. They'll cover that in a much different manner. But I'm just saying it's a very unfair situation that takes place. So I will direct a completely overhaul DOJ to investigate every radical, out-of-control prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist enforcement of the law. And I'm also going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong actions on crime. We're going to protect our police. They're afraid to do anything. They're told not to do anything. When they walk into a department store in Chicago and they walk out carrying television sets and everything else and the police, they want to do something, but they're told not to do it. And then if they do it, they get in trouble. We are going to indemnify them. They have to stop crime and they can stop it too. They'll do a great job. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety and beauty better than ever before. We're going to rebuild our cities. Our cities are in trouble and we'll work with Democrat mayors and governors, uh, if we have to. But we will. No, we will. Look, they are all run by Democrats, and they are all just about in horrible shape. Safety will again be restored so that children can go outside and play in the park without being beat up, molested, or shot. Is that okay? Even if you're in Iowa, you like that one, right? You know. Because what's happened to our cities, you have to see, you wouldn't even, they're not even recognizable. You know, San Francisco, I own a big building in San Francisco, and San Francisco was a uh, magnificent city 10, 12, 15 years ago. And today, you look at what's happened to San Francisco. It's so sad to see it. But all of them, Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, all of them, they're all run by Democrats. We're also going to fight to give your much better health care. We want to give you much better health care than Obamacare. Now, look, I'm not, you know, they like to cover that. I'm going to... We're going to give you, Obamacare is a disaster. It's very expensive for you. Forget about for the country for a second. For you, it's a horror show. There have been tremendous complaints over the last two years, especially recently. We're going to get you much better health care at a lower price for you. And that will be either working on Obamacare or doing something new. But we're going to give you much better because you have lousy health care and it's too expensive. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity. And other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or mask mandate. And who believes I have to say this, but I do, and I will keep men out of women's sports. I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. We will protect innocent life, and we will restore free speech, and I will secure our elections. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. That's our goal. And every Republican governor should do that right now. There's no reason to wait. These Republican governors that don't do it, they're not on our side. But until then, Republicans have to win. If you took all of these things that I'm saying, there has never been anything like what's happening to our country right now. Joe Biden has been a disaster. He's the worst president we've ever had. He's the most incompetent, and he's the most corrupt president. So if you want to save America from crooked Joe Biden, Then get every patriot you know, make sure they're registered Republicans, have to be registered, and then get them out to vote in their local precinct caucus at 7 p.m. on Monday, January 15th. Now, I'm going to be there, okay? I'm going to be there. I guess I should go maybe Des Moines. I'd come here. I like you people, but maybe Des Moines. Is that the best thing? But I'm going to be, she said, no, come here. 
we have to get them out. So I'm going to be here, and I'm going to be working it just like everybody else. We have tremendous numbers of precinct captains here, all these people with these gorgeous hats. I want one of those hats. It's the only way I can get one of those hats is if I actually become a precinct captain. I don't know if I'm qualified to be a precinct captain, but I'm going to try. But I thank you very much, by the way. I appreciate it. But I'll be here, and uh, we're going to be uh, working the caucuses personally. The whole world is watching, so learn how to caucus and find your caucus location, which is often different than where you normally vote. It's ia.donaldjtrump.com. So in conclusion, from Fort Dodge to Cedar Rapids, from Des Moines to Davenport, from Waterloo to Sioux Center, we stand on the shoulders of generations of Iowa patriots who tamed the wilderness, braved the elements, tilled the soil, worked the fields, built the factories, and poured out their blood, sweat, and tears to make this country into the greatest nation in the history of the world. And it's not great any longer, but it will soon be greater than ever before. I promise you that. But now we're a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has lost its confidence. It really has, hasn't it? Lost its confidence. It's a sad thing to say. Think of it. A nation that's lost its confidence, lost its willpower, and lost its strength. We are a nation that has lost its way. But we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it's hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no other group of people has ever fought before, ever, ever, ever. 2024 is our final battle. It is our final battle. If we lose this battle, we lose our country. You have to get out there, and you have to make sure they're honest with their voting. What, uh, what they did in 2020 was horrible. All of the problems that we have today, you wouldn't have any of them. You'd have a lot more living people on our planet, too. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country, and they do hate our country. We will rout the fake news media. And we will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House on election night 2024. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten man and woman will be forgotten no longer. You're going to be forgotten no longer. We will love our country. We will take care of our country. We will pray to God for our strength and for our liberty. And we will pray for God, and we will be with God. We will pray for God, and we will be with God. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We're going to make it very powerful. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We're going to be proud. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Go caucus.